Hey, what's up? I'm in the second part. Please go check out the, the previous part to gauge your bearings uh, so that we can continue from where we left off without having to wrap on uh, too much. Yeah, okay, so I keep getting dreams, all right? And I'm going to explain these dreams. In the first part, I was lamenting about how it is that I just keep getting, never mind dreams, but just the, the attempt on my life that reminds me very much to, to, to the attempt against Israel and it was a successful attempt against Israel but it never can be against us the body of Christ why because we have embraced the Messiah so the mistakes of Israel we don't commit the errors of Israel we don't commit the times of the Gentiles are today before one minute before the rapture happens we as Christians one minute before the, the, the rapture happens we as Christians inherit essentially what would have been Israel's coverage by God to make sure that they get everything the Lord is the one that sent Joshua and Caleb into the land of Canaan to pretty much take it like all of it and now today Israel has got like only a fragment a portion of that land they have sacrificed Judea and Samaria they have sacrificed so much and are making concessions with their enemies in a way that God wouldn't have and they rejected their Messiah so once they rejected their Messiah God then gave over not the promises but the coverage the protection the success the, the the violent prosperity that the hebrews enjoyed in the old two christians for now let me go to romans 11 to help you understand what we're talking about uh romans 11 okay let's read from the top the remnant of israel i ask then has god rejected his people by no means for i myself am an israelite a descendant of abraham a member of the tribe of benjamin god has not rejected his people whom he forever whom he foreknew do you not know what the scripture says of elijah how he appeals to god uh, against israel they have killed your prophets they have demolished your altars and i alone am left and they seek my life but what is god what is god's reply to him i have kept for myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to baal so too at the present time there is a remnant chosen by grace but if it is by grace it is no longer on the basis of works otherwise a grace would have would, would no longer be grace what then israel failed to obtain what it was seeking the elect obtained it but the rest were hardened as it is written god gave them a spirit of stupor eyes that would not see and ears that would not hear down to this very day and david says let their table become a snare and a trap a stumbling block and a retribution for them indeed when netanyahu was busy making concessions with hamas it became a trap and a snare because look at what happened in the kibbutz on the 7th of october let their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see and bend their backs forever gentiles grafted in from 11 so i ask did they stumble in order that they might fall by no means rather through their trespass salvation has come to the gentiles so as to make israel jealous so it is about making israel jealous now if their trespass means riches for the world if their future means riches for the gentiles how much more full how much will their full inclusion mean so this then is, is what it is that i'm trying to talk about god will ultimately restore israel to himself but before then we have got fullness as gentiles let's read that just one last uh, again now if their trespass means riches for the world i don't eat us and if their failure means riches for the gentiles how much more will their full inclusion mean so what paul is saying here is that where it is that israel fell and stumbled thanks to them rejecting their messiah we will rise what they made a mistake in doing we will conquer we will thrive we will not give away our lands we will not compromise and settle with our enemies just for the sake of peace we will understand that god has not come to the earth to bring peace but a sword and that nations will rise against nations that when the lord has said to us this is what i've promised you Garabo. this is what i've promised you peter wherever the gentiles find themselves that they will stand on that and that they will fight even when many beleaguer them when nations around them are insisting hey i'm me i'm taking it we stand and we're like no like just frankly ew what are you doing i'm not moving i'm not barging and when then people insist on breaking down our boulders anyway our doors anyway throwing boulders on us we already have got a, a, an offensive that is going to so humiliate them that they won't know whether they're coming or going when they come against the body of christ 
they make on that day like the seven sons of Skiva. They make like the seven sons of Skiva. Let me just... Compromise and settling is the worst thing that anybody at all who claims to love the Lord can ever do. The people of God, the Hebrews, the Jews, they've always known. Now that I'm not eating, I don't need to put my phone down there. The Hebrews have always known what their land is. They've got the Torah. And while they might not embrace the New Testament, it doesn't matter because in the Torah, their lands have been allotted. They know what they are. And yet they've compromised. And the law says that nobody must split my land. They will be judged. And yet they've allowed the land to be split. They've allowed themselves to lose Judea, to, to, sorry, Judea and Samaria. They've allowed themselves to compromise and make deals with their enemies. When the Lord has made it clear to us as the body of Christ in the New Testament that he has come upon the earth not to bring peace, but a sword. So we, we are always waiting to fight for what is ours. I will read ultimately from the book of Revelation, but let me finish Romans 11. Now I'm speaking, now I am speaking to you Gentiles in as much as... Inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order to somehow make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean um, but life from the dead? If the dough offered as first fruits is holy, so is the whole lump. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. But if some of the branches were broken off and you, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant towards the branches. If you are, remember, it is not you who supports the root, but the root that supports you. Then you will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief, but you stand fast through faith and that's why the body of Christ Christians stand so hard and fast with Israel instead of underestimating them instead of treating them like no-brainers we rather love them we we are the uh, I was listening yesterday to some interview um between I think it was Tom Hughes and another guy now nah, it was Eric Stackelberg he was interviewing a, 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 a Jewish rabbi that is in Christ like a messianic Jew and this messianic Jew rabbi guy really hit the nail in the coffin when he said that these, the, these attacks against Israel it's literally the Jews and the Christians against the world so they really need the Christian world right now and the nice thing about the Christian world is that they've got the numbers in a way that the Jews don't in a way that the Jews don't the Jews don't have the numbers but we as Christians the gospel Matthew 24 has been fulfilled has been preached across the world and so the end is about to come meaning that there are millions if not billions of Christians across the world, meaning that their war against Hamas is not going to be one where they're so outnumbered that they won't know whether they're coming or going. Those who are against them are not the body of Christ. And those who are against them are ha ha having to deal with the fact that there are so many of us Christians that still stand with the Jews. And why do we stand with them? Why are they able to successfully say it is us and the Christians in this battle because the world is going to increasingly turn its back against Israel. The world is going to become increasingly in that it'll start out supporting Israel and then they're going to break away. But the body of Christ is going to stand hard and fast for Christ for, for Jews in a way that they've always stood for Jews because the body of Christ is by far the biggest supporter on the earth of the Jews. We are the ones that are even enabling Aliyah for them to be reconciled, reunited to their land in order for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled. The Christians are working tooth and nail. It was from a Christian American farmer that they even got some, if not all of those red heifers. That, that whole red heifer uh, thing that they're doing is because of their unbelief, they have yet to embrace their Messiah. But Christians understand that in like certain things need to be fulfilled before the very end can come. So they enable much of what the Hebrews are doing, the Jews are doing in order for Bible prophecy to be fulfilled. So the red heifers were bred, if you want to call it that, by American evangel evangelicals. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the body of Christ is the biggest supporter of the Jews, even if the Jews sometimes spit on our shoes. They don't like us because we make them jealous. But we don't underestimate them due to the fact that we understand that we are growing from a root that had its original shoots or branches. They were cut off. We were engrafted into the branch as a result, but we are not to underestimate them. So taking this very seriously, we stand with the Jews. But we recognize that Jacob's trouble is coming and a remnant of them are going to be saved. A third 
are going to be saved in the tribulation. Then they will finally be restored to Israel. However, all of their feats right now to live in peace with their neighbors are going to fail because of the fact that they are doing it in their own strength. They're not trusting in the Lord. They're trusting in their military might. They're trusting in their alliances with, um, with global bodies. They're trusting in their ability to foster peace. They're trusting in their ability to uh, make concessions with Hamas. Uh, yeah, and what that's doing is coming back to bite them in the nose. Why? Because look at the attack that happened on October 7. Uh, at present, um, much of the Islamic nations around Israel are busy talking about how it is that October 7th is going to happen over and over and over and over again. These bloodthirsty minions they're not well they they are minions in the sight of god but frankly they're many in comparison to israel they cannot stop talking about how they're going to massacre the jews again over and over and over again an inordinate hatred and the jews will continuously get massacred just as in the holocaust just like in the seven the october 7 thing the the the, the wars that they have endured all throughout history the anti-semitism across the world is going to continue to happen until they will look upon him whom they have pierced and mourn until they look at jesus so ours is to make them jealous but also in making them jealous just like paul is saying over here we gotta recognize that frankly they're the originals and the lord will always come back for them the promise has not died for them so we stand with them even though they have rejected our messiah because it is in times like these that jews who could not stand christians because apparently we have stolen their messiah really appreciate that we stand with them no matter what right now in this very terrible time that they're enduring right now in israel more th than any other time in their existence do they appreciate christians because of war because of the anti-semitism across the world they appreciate us magushubile are like 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 you know the way that kids sometimes feel when they're angry at their parents for not capitulating to all of their demands and they will pass their parents shade until this kid is stranded after going to some party against their parents uh permission and then where does the people that they left at the party with abuse them or the kid got beaten or the kid got left or the kid got stranded and now all of a sudden when you call your mother and your mother rocks up and doesn't even uh, yell at you but it's just grateful that you're, you're safe when you get picked up in some strange location that's when you really appreciate your mother even though you were passing your mom's shade and you even snuck out of home jews are like that to christians when times are good they pass us shade but when times are bad they really are grateful for our support of them and right now times are bad for the jews and support of them is inspired by romans 11 recognizing that we are not to have a pump over them because at the end of the day they will always be god's original people and thank god indeed that the christians are numbered we have numbers we are evangelized all across the world and we stand hard and fast with our um would-be brothers and sisters they're not yet brothers and sisters they're not yet back home they're like prodigals and a remnant of them will be saved and when they come back we're going to be reconciled to them and them to us at the second coming of Jesus Christ, when he lands on the Mount of Olives, they will cry out to the one whom they've pierced because the the alliances that they hold on to and their peace deals and all of their might of men that they are latching on to today are going to fall apart. America, it is clear at some point, is not going to be able to be there for Israel. If anything, right now, the support by America of Israel, it appears is going to be used more as a leash on Israel to prevent them from doing the full thing that they need to do in order to... Uh, uh, what is this? Um, in order to retaliate against Hamas and the body of Christ are essentially the only people on the earth right now that understand what needs to be done. We know what needs to be done. We understand what Israel has to do. And we stand with them all the way to the end. In a way that America is going to ultimately let go in the spirit of diplomacy. They're going to insist on a ceasefire at some point. And the body of Christ are going to be the only ones that are going to be like ceasefire, shmees fire. Cease fire might be behind. The body of Christ are going to stick with the resolve of Israel. And that's important. But the body of Christ is leaving. The restrainer is leaving. The rapture is happening. And when the chunk of us leave there will be another revival after the rapture but from a vantage point where christians are not going to be so strong anymore because religion is going to be severely undermined due to the calamity that has happened on the earth uh the powers that be that are megalomaniacal are going to want to use that particular event that is the rapture to control the narrative and religion is going to be review viewed as threatening all over the show and given that religion is going to be viewed as threatening uh, radical christianity there's not going to be place for it there won't be place for any radical religion not even islam they're going to come up with their own ecumenical movement that is largely controlled by mere mortals governments are going to be gods and they're going to ultimately hand over their power to one god one mere mortal who is the antichrist so even though there will still be quite a large body of christ on the earth after the rapture because of the revival the global 
revival that will happen the numbers of christians will fade in comparison to the present numbers due to the fact that there's going to be such a, a lack of incentive to turn to christ in the tribulation and secondly you won't get to be free as a christian if anything you're going to be severely persecuted your religion is going to be shunned it's going to be frowned upon and if you don't take the mark of the beast even in the midway of the tribulation more so are you going to be persecuted because then you're facing beheading that is what's coming on the earth meaning that christians are not going to be able to stand for the jews the way that they presently are prior to the rapture so when the restraint gets taken out that's when the jews are going to be left butt naked they're going to be left butt naked and they're going to try to fight for themselves but they're going to get massacred worse even than the carnage that slapped them at the holocaust and they will eventually at the very end of it all they're literally going to wait all the way up until the end once they've been squeezed into a tight corner uh cry out to the one whom they have pierced initially they will flee to the mountains of judea uh they will go to is it petra i don't know maybe it's petra people speculate first they will run away because there will be so much anti-semitism but upon fleeing in that flight in that environment where they have fled the elect jews are going to cry out to the one whom they have because they're going to put the pieces of the puzzle together they're going to realize what has happened they're not going to have christian standing for them anymore evangelism is not going to be so easily done anymore if anything it's going to be so hard to evangelize in those days because of how persecuted christianity is going to be that the lord is going to send 144,000 supernatural men that are going to evangelize that cannot be killed he's going to send two witnesses he's also going to have the, an angel fly above preaching the gospel and telling everybody not to take the mark of the beast because it's going to be difficult for actual christians to just easily talk to their next door neighbor because it's going to come with great danger preach the gospel and indeed the lord does not expect us as the body of christ to just ride out danger he says if they persecute you in one town flee to the next so christians are that's not going to be different there's not going to be any um change from that particular passage because god is not a man that he should lie or son a man to change his mind so christians get to flee from persecution in the tribulation they get to avoid it they they, they won't have the same level of boldness as the ones prior to the tribulation why because the bible makes it clear that the devil will be given authority to make power war with the saints and to overcome them there's only one time in the history of the human race where that's a thing where christians get overcome to a point of irrecovery there is no coming back from that there's no bouncing back um it is in the tribulation and the only reason why the lord allows the devil to overwhelm us is because the whole world has been made so reprobate that indeed most of them are being judged at this point and not being given grace and so when you see those who are standing for the one true god getting so massacred less than of an incentive do you have to actually truly love him the lord is sending the world to the end of themselves and is finishing everything off so that he can come and reign righteously after rescuing a remnant uh, so Christians are not going to be as powerful and with them being not as uh, not with them being not as powerful as they presently are they of course are not going to be able to be there for the Jews and them being not them not being there for the Jews means that the Jews across the nations are going to be just brutalized they're going to be brutalized and they're going to have to flee from wherever they're at and they're gonna have to hide and a third of them the elect jews are going to survive uh the the tribulation and then the, they will be reconciled to their messiah because when you're squeezed in a corner that's when you suddenly wear your piety again that's when you realize the one whom you have pierced uh the jews will still be waiting for their messiah they're still currently waiting for their messiah but there's gonna come a time when they realize that he's not coming when the whole world has turned against god and there is an antichrist and he is an abomination and that abomination that causes desolation chilling in the holy place that's when they're gonna realize that oh my goodness this thing must have obviously happened because there's no way it can still happen and so they will look back to history and see and wonder where have we ever seen a, a messiah like figure they will realize it was jesus because there's no way that the messiah is still coming now just look around it was jesus and so they will eventually turn back to him when they are beleaguered and when they turn back to him that's when the lord will rock up landing on the mount of olives okay go west bank that they gave away he will land there basically telling everybody it's always been my land it's always been the land of my people and not only this there are other portions that they were supposed to get and understand they're going to be recovered israel when the lord returns as a country it's going to be bigger on the map than what it currently is the little sliver of land in the middle east that we look at now is going to expand it is going to get bigger giving the people of god the land that god gave to them from the very get-go because god is the one 
that will make it clear that what I say sticks. I'm not a man that I should that I should lie. No son a man to change my mind. But in the right, and so therefore, what land I gave them originally, what land I gave to Joshua and Caleb, what land I gave to my people, they're gonna get all of it back. Meaning that eventually, all the surrounding nations that have taken portions of uh, uh, God's land, making war for God's land, are gonna give it up easily because this time around, well, who are you fighting exactly? Uh, the king of the universe, the god of the universe, the one who came from the sky in in a white horse with like hordes and hordes of holy ones with him are you seriously gonna try and fight that guy no like stop like chechela thing. move and the lord will then do, uh, literally just go, uh, recreate the map of the world is going to alter to accommodate israel for what it is right now like presently china uh, is busy out here mis apparently allegedly mistakenly really in, in, in inverted commas uh erasing israel from the map like yeah they they published a map apparently in china that does not have israel in it and then they claimed that it was a mistake but it's online like it's online there was obviously somebody who made edits to that because china is just trying to cause war china is trying to cause instability in the world that it might come up superior in the end and run the show that's the level of blasphemy on the earth especially by nations that don't that are um uh, atheistic nations that are irreligious they are extremely blasphemous against god and also nations that are anti christ in particular and anti the god of the bible they are extremely blasphemous uh, against israel and in being as blasphemous as uh, they are, are of course saying these things but they are going to all of them be humbled because who in the world bashes their fist against god the god of the universe it's written in god's word after nebuchadnezzar falls and rises again that the nations of the world are accounted as nothing before emmanuel who can say to god what have you done no one can say to god what have you done and ultimately even xi jinping if he's still alive at the second coming of christ will recognize no one can say to god i am accounted as nothing before him I am one of those silly kings. But Xi Jinping does not look like the kind of guy that survives the tribulation. I don't know, but you know what? Don't judge. We don't know what's going on here. Uh, so let me just finish this before I talk about the dream that I had and the like the narcissistic insistence against my person. Really, frankly, these men that are trying to come up and pull the rug from underneath the feet of a woman are similar to Hamas, similar to invasions of God's land, similar to black people just in total, similar to entitled folk that want their bread buttered on both sides, have their cake and eat it too, and are naive enough to imagine they can wipe out an entire people groups from the face of the earth. Are there any tribes on the planet that have ever existed that have no remnant of people still in existence? I guess maybe they do exist. But to imagine that the, I mean like, the Jews have just been this miracle thing that should be non-existent today. Much like, I guess, the barbarians or the Scythians or Scythians or whatever. And yet they're thriving. They've got like a whole land and their language has been preserved. I was watching some documentary on, is it Al Jazeera? About, I didn't watch all of it though, about South Africa's dying language. The, the, the name of the documentary is South Africa's dying language. And they're basically speaking about the Khoisan language. The Lots of clicking. Yeah, the Khoisan language is apparently dying in South Africa. No, Charlize Theron, not Afrikaans. Just the Khoisan language. Like, stop it. Um, yeah, the Khoisan language is dying. And there are some people that are trying to keep it going. But it's dying due to the fact that lands have been... We've, we've been integrated. And a lot of the Khoisan now, their descendants are Afrikaans speaking. And all the other... Uh, what is this? Um, official languages. And so it's dwindling. It's dwindling. And it has been also mixed or sort of kind of intertwined in the dialect of Kosa. it's in uh, some of the dialects but not in its pure original form right yeah that's exactly what it is now much like what Afrikaans is it's some derivative of the dutch language but it's not about to die because it's like enough people in the country speaking it type setup thing but this Khoisan language is uh passing away because they've been scattered and they've been mixed into tribes all across south africa such that some of them are in the Kosa tribe, some of them are, are, are colored, some of them are, yeah, so they, it's just all just watering down severely until ultimately a couple of years from today, if at all the Lord will allow the world to still continue up until the end, it will no longer be spoken at all. It is a dying language in the country. Yeah, uh, well, Hebrew was supposed to die when the Israelites were scattered across the world. It was supposed to die when they got mixed into Germany, France, when they got mixed into America, wherever they went and whatever language that they raised their kids um, speaking in those uh, environments. It was supposed, their Hebrew language was supposed to die. They were so, like, I'm, I'm Twana slash Zulu. 
and my mother well my dad doesn't count because he was kind of absent but my mom did not insist on teaching me and my older sister so she can speak pure Tswana from Rustenburg but my sister and I speak the Soweto Tswana that's mixed with everything it's like Fanagalo it's not the pure dialect and there was a time in my life when I was like I wish I could speak Tswana the way and Zulu the way you know like Natal speak Zulu and the way that Tswana is from Botswana speaks Tswana I wished that my mom had insisted that I found out I wished that my dad had insisted that I learned learned the pure language instead of making me speak whatever rubbish it is that we speak in Soweto in South Africa uh, so I'm watered down so if I'm watered down then you must understand that more so are my children going to be watered down unless I take my children to a school where they will teach them pure Zwana because mom cannot I, I, I would not be able in my own capacity to really truly like teach my kid my language and I, I saw this happening with my younger sister who was younger than us by another 17 years I mean, I'm older than her by 16 and a half to 17 years right that's my baby sister and her Twana is just so whack it's so whack like when she says that I remember one time she said one of her shirts was torn uh, from school she had torn her shirt at school and she came home and said to my mom that ma that was when she was in high school she was like ma hem back a it be <laughs> she said to my mom, Ma, him back at you to My mom was like, What? <laughs> She's like, Him back at you to be uh, What that means is my shirt is broken. <laughs> <laughs> she what that means is my, my my shirt is broken uh what would have been the correct terminology is tabukhile ma mpaka tabukhile that means ma my my shirt is torn but she said ma my shirt is broken <laughs> and my mom was like tabukhile mpaka tabukhile my shirt is torn not broken well it's cuz the dialect got watered down my sister grew up in an environment where even the kids in her school were not speaking as much of their original language uh, Growing up in this Johannesburg of ours. My mom did not insist just like with us Neither did I insist and it, it like the watering down was even worse in the generation of my little sister So I can say in a way that my little sister is saying So her is even worse than mine and my older sisters So with generations a language just gets eroded away at if at all people don't keep speaking it if at all people don't maintain it if at all people do not continue to proliferate that particular language it will die it will die it'll go from ma my shirt is torn to ma my shirt is broken and then ma my shirt is <laughs> what's another word i can find <laughs> my shirt is is i don't know <laughs> destroyed <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just gonna get worse and worse until eventually the kids are just speaking english the kids are just speaking whatever is being proliferated aja in these streets so hatswana is bad hatswana is really bad hazulu's bad just all the languages of, of the country are really bad uh, in my little sister uh, the only thing that's working out for her is a little bit of English and, and because her first crash ever was Afrikaans She's somewhat okay with Afrikaans, but uh, yo, the Sitswana says everything else is falling apart The Hebrews was supposed to be like my little sister uh, Like and worse like even the the child that would be my little sister's child and my little sister's so, and my little sister's child's child would then by the time the generations had reached her there would be nothing left of the Hebrew language, but they were recollected because of the fact that they were scattered across the world, speaking German, speaking English, speaking French, speaking etc. Portuguese, um, Spanish, but then they came back to the land and somehow the language is being spoken like it, had, it has always been spoken. Somehow the Lord miraculously kept them proliferating the language. Somehow the Lord made them not as irresponsible as my mom, who knows pure Zwana, but her daughters don't. And her daughter's daughters are therefore going to know an even more watered down version. They, they made sure that they taught their children the language, the Hebrew language. And as a result of making sure of that by the time they got restored to now they are still they are still speaking their language it has never fallen apart they're not speaking english they're not insisting on speaking whatever what is this are uh, their multiple languages they're not speaking russian they're speaking hebrew and there are whole lessons being taught in that regard that's a miracle it's a miracle because look at everybody else that have that, that aren't one were not the original chosen people of the earth they're like the koi koi 
they're like the Khoisan, their language, they're clicking, is going. But somehow the Hebrews have maintained it. Those are more evidences of the fact that the Bible is true. Well, the word of God is true because Bible prophecy keeps coming to pass. So when you hold on to any other God than the one true God, you are shooting yourself in the foot or you're just an ignoramus. And because you're an ignoramus, you think that ignorance is bliss, even though learning or finding out the truth would actually rescue you. It would redeem you. Uh, it's written in Hosea 4, 6 or 8 or whatever that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And because of uh, them not getting language then God is gonna cut them off from the land so you do yourself a favor by reading the Word of God studying researching finding out what is fact and when you find out the facts it is hard to deny Jesus it is hard to deny that he is king that he is Lord it is hard to deny that the Bible is true uh, like to this day I, uh, but then again the hearing ear and the seeing eye both are from the Lord to this day I still don't understand how the Hebrews can read the Torah and not see Jesus like Isaiah 52 51 I don't see how they don't see that they like when the Bible says that he was pierced for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities and the chest spies the chastisement of um king what what is this the iniquity of us all the chastisement on his back or something is they know yeah okay and by his stripes were healed you get my point go and look at that particular word i am out here butchering the words in their exact chronology but the servant that was nothing of him you know desirable that he might be looked at it is such a perfect description of Jesus. I don't know how they know they don't see it. But then again, the hearing, ear, and the seeing eye both are from the Lord. So many prophecies have come to pass um, that are written off in the New Testament that in the Old Testament are also aligned hermeneutically that for the life of me, I don't understand how they don't see it. But then again, like I said, the hearing, ear, and the seeing eye both are from the Lord. For me, it's also about the Orthodox Jews, the ones that are always in the Torah. They should see it. They should see it. Maybe secular Jews are just as ignorant as everybody else but the orthodox ones I, I proper like i really like i don't know how they don't see the messiah but that's just the thing the lord blinds them he puts them in a stupor like it is written right here in romans 11 but having spoken that at length i know i can't be long winding and laborious the bottom line is as the gentiles we've been given the eyes that they lost and we've been given the ears that they lost for a temporary season and until ultimately the Lord engrafts them back and they turn to their Messiah, him who, whom they have pierced. Yeah, he gives us what we need to see. So you can deceive a Jew that is non-Messianic, but you can't deceive a pious, consecrated, super, like, like absolutely fervent Christian. You cannot. You, it's impossible. Why? Because Matthew 24 says so. That if it was possible, even the elect of God would be deceived. The fact that there, that, that, that sentence, if it was possible, is there evidence is that it is not. It, it, it is implied in that particular statement that it's impossible to deceive us. So the attempt is just a, a violently naive one to even try is to put yourself in some pretty hot water because you've made yourself an enemy of God. It is to make yourself like the kings written off in Psalm 2 that gather together and they plot against God and he just laughs at them. He just laughs at them. And you also make the believer, uh, what do you call this? You make them wear their full armor. You make them soldiers. Whenever people are trying to force a non-biblical agenda into the equation that will somehow disprove Bible prophecy, God grabs his people, the Hebrew, the Jews, his Christians, and he makes them stiff-necked like soldiers. Like if you think about uh, is it Ezekiel, uh, when the Lord was calling Ezekiel, you can go and read it in the book of Ezekiel. I don't know where exactly it is, but I do believe it might be Ezekiel 3 when he's been called to be a watchman. The Lord basically tells Ezekiel that I'm going to make you as stiff-necked as they are. I'm going to make your head hard like bronze, just like them. So when they come like hitting you, like butting you, like butting you with their heads, you're going to butt them back and you're going to clash. In other words, you're never going to give up. You're never going to lie. You're never going to like low, lay low. You're never going to let go. They are going to work on you so as to cause you to give up and throw in the towel they're going to frustrate you they're going to hook up all different kinds of gaslighting and reverse psychology to mess your mind up they're going to try to make you sick and guess what you're doing but you're going to be stiff-necked like them so with all of their attempts i'm going to give you one up the enemy comes at us like a flood but the lord rises a standard above them so the lord makes his servants just like ezekiel in that knowing the number just the amount of war that is going to be declared on us he then makes our heads stiff like brass so asiali we don't give up 
YouTube keeps bringing down our content, shadow banning the living daylights out of us. Family members treat us like trash. We are supposed to fall apart, but what happens is that we get strengthened and our resolve is ever more fervent. Because apart from Christ, we can do nothing. It is in Him that we do this. He is the one that makes our, our heads like brass. And if He's the God of the universe, then I mean, you can forget about winning. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? If the God of the universe has made your head stiff like brass, your butting of heads with the enemies about you will only give you a headache when you have won and all of them are mowed to the ground, they've been flattened. Before then, you will somehow have some strange miraculous power to butt heads and ignoring the headache it's giving you all the way until every last one of them is on the floor. Then only you will faint. Then only you will need triage. Then only you will need medication. Then only will you need surgery. Then only will you dare pass out. But before then, you will be butting heads with people that think that they can overwhelm you in their incredible numbers. So with Israel, for instance, in the war, Yagog and Magog, it is written by them in Psalm, no, not Gog and Magog, sorry, Mara Zechariah. Uh, Zechariah 12 speaks about the nations around Israel may you know really just kind of trying to have a field day with them but then God is going to make them a cup of staggering or a cup of trembling and it is written of them that even the feeblest in other words the weakest the most feeble among them the grannies and the little children and the people with the cancer even the feeblest among them are going to be like David David was a mighty warrior that never lost a single battle and even the feeblest among them is going to be like David so you can see the parallel with Ezekiel being given a stiff head against all of those who would be fighting with him to butt heads with them back when they butt his head and in the war of Zechariah is that basically when you try to unfulfill Bible prophecy when you try to do something that is going to make the Bible untrue the Lord will strengthen those people to be so good at basically making war that they will make a, a wasteland out of whoever is coming at them because the Lord cares not so much about our vindication as he does about his own name's sake. If at all any Bible prophecy were to be disproved, the Lord would be proven a liar. And so for his own name's sake, he will make Ezekiel with a stiff neck so he can win, with a stiff head so he can win. He will make the people of Israel in Zechariah 12, even though they have not acknowledged their Messiah, he will make the feeblest among them like uh, what do you call this? David. And you can trust, therefore, with the body of Christ, who is supposed to conquer, who has been given authority to make a war with, uh, sorry, uh, to trample on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm us. No weapon formed against us shall indeed prosper, and we refute every tongue and condemn it that accuses us in the judgment. And given that that is supposed to be true about us, to lose is for us to look like, for the Bible to not look like it's true. And so the Lord, when you are beleaguered on all sides, he will, in the fulfillment of his own word, for his own name's sake, never mind our vindication. It's more about him. He loves his name. He will make us the feeblest among us, like David. We will win against multiple Goliaths. He will make out of us, like Ezekiel. We will win against a people that are hoping to water us down with like social conditioning, with... Uh, what do you call this? Uh, gaslighting, psychological manipulation with discouragement, with uh, bizarre, haunting, like uh, a, a bizarre, haunted like ecosystem where you're living a very strange life that, hey man, doesn't make sense. You don't understand what in the world is going on and yet you conquer and we know that this is true not only of the hebrews in the old testament or the pre-messiah jew the pre-messianic jew the pre-christ jews who are covered by by by, by god uh, prior to them rejecting their messiah but we know that it's true even of the new testament because the lord says in first peter 4 that we must not consider it strange when we go through trials of different kinds for this is for the testing of our faith and after this testing has done its work in us we will be established and complete lacking in nothing do you understand so god makes it clear across all of his children all throughout the ages prior to the cross the cross and after the cross we are going to be given heads of brass and be iron men walking around that everybody's going to be shooting bullets at and anomalously they're not going to fall there is going to be a strangeness of sturdiness a strangeness of fervor a strangeness of astuteness and a strangeness of uh what is this um uguma rigid on the floor even though bullets a hail of them are coming at you you're gonna be like david you will not lose a war the baton was given over to us when the hebrews rejected their messiah that the brass head of ezekiel belongs to christians now and in it belonging to us it means shoot 
bang, bang, beat us down, bang, bang, hit the ground, bang, bang, oh, that awful sound, bang, bang, but it's you that will stay down. You are the one that are going to somehow miraculously be defeated. Why? Because we tend to be outnumbered. Why do we win? Because the battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. The Lord is the one that gives supernatural strength. Apart from him, we can do nothing. The power and the might that we are given is from heaven. Meaning, if God be for us, who can be against us? Nobody. No one can be against us because God is for us. When we when we have that level of faith, aye, tiny as a mustard seed, it can move a mountain. So it's naive for armies upon battalions, uh, to, uh, what is this, uh, encircling us about to anticipate that their sheer numbers are going to ultimately knock us down. When you beleaguer a Christian like that, you put them into overdrive and the adrenaline rush, rush is by the Holy Spirit inspired unto fight as opposed to flight. And when we fight, we win. We conquer. Because like I said, the battle is not ours. On that day, he's the one that gives us the words that we need to speak. All this nonsense coming. I am rebuking it for the what 20th, 50th, 60th, a millionth time. And I will rebuke it again tomorrow. Because yet another stiff-necked rando valley of dry bones is going to be trying to fight me when I'm a whole muscular person. I will make like Alexander the Great, do you understand? And I will conquer. I will win. And you will never find my Achilles heel because I don't have it. The Achilles heel of the earth is a lack of trust in Christ. Christ, however, does not have an Achilles heel. Why? Because he's God. Being God makes him what? Omnipotent omnipotent if you are omnipotent you are all powerful meaning you have no weakness and so while i as a mere mortal can have weaknesses i serve one who doesn't and i am seated in heavenly places with him meaning all the bears go in a war with a, an achilles that does not have a heel to strike nobody succeeds against him nobody wins against an achilles whose heel is not identified as a weakness we have no weakness because when we are weak we are strong his grace is sufficient for us and his power is made perfect in our weakness. So as outnumbered as, and, and as beleaguered on all sides as I am, as comprehensively disregarded, my, my computer just switched off and just fell on its own, just like that, as completely comprehensively disregarded as I might be, all of the spiritual attack, as in, as comprehensively beleaguered on all sides as I presently am, that's irre irrelevant. Uh, what is this? YouTube. Um, what it's doing to me my shadow banning I have stopped grieving the shadow ban state that I'm in why because YouTube looks dumb why does YouTube look dumb they look dumb because I am obviously astronomically gifted I am astronomically excellent to America I'm an embarrassment to, to America and I'm an embarrassment to all my enemies about me and I am looking like a haunting and that is exactly what God wants the Lord wants my enemies to look like eerie demonic creeps he wants them to look he wants this to be clear for what it is it has to be obvious that demonic activity exists you see when my case was running rampant doing initially in the beginning stages of my sorrow all the people around me were basically latching on to the prospect that people are going to deny the presence of witchcraft and write it off as crazy and anybody at all that is crying witch anybody at all that is screaming this is the activity of witches would then look like these paranoid schizophrenics that are accusing everybody of witchcraft the lord saw that the lord saw that witches would lean on the world's uh, propensity or proclivity towards skepticism in this regard so what did he do he made a case that was obviously a witch's he made a case for me that would evidence witchcraft and how excellent I am, how gifted I am, how also unable to do anything in my life, beleaguered on all sides with everything falling apart. It is evidencing that everyone I've ever accused of witchcraft is exactly just that, a witch. He made me a viable, believable case for witchcraft. Because everyone that happens upon my content realizes that I'm only viewed by one or two people. Either accuses YouTube of shadow banning me or believes me when I say kibolo ibona. Because it's impossible for a person that is speaking these things with this level of giftedness and also with this level of convicting power to just be ignored and definitely, indefinitely, to not be proliferated, to not be pushed from one person to the next. Uh, yeah, the spite that people have walked in in trying to pretend like I'm nothing has only made them look like baloi. Is that basic? It's only made them look like witches and that's exactly what God wanted to do. So all I have to do 
in the climate of people's gaslighting and uh, deliberate attempts to deny that there was a lot of spiritual awkward haunting activity going on all i gotta do is make like ezekiel with a brass with a brass head keep fighting keep pitching keep showing up keep uploading to a, a content sorry kenya a page a youtube that's going nowhere just keep uploading in Jafela so that you can make the haunting look especially eerie. I have got to make this look like a haunted freaking mansion. I have got to make this look like the garage. I've got to make it look like the ring. I've got to make it look like Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger. I've got to make it look like Annabelle. i got to make my story literally one of the most scary, like haunted lives on earth. I got to convince people that this stuff is real and not only is it real there is power only in jesus because when i conquer and it will happen it's indefinite it's inevitable sorry when i conquer they will then realize that even if the haunting is as extreme as it was in the case of Karabo, there is power in the name of Jesus. That's why the devil wants me to commit suicide. That's why he wants me to marry an unbeliever. That's why anything at all, by any means necessary, they will do anything to silence my case, to make sure I don't go anywhere because the devil understands the redemptive power of my work. Once I gain my recompense, once I gain my, uh, once they get their comeuppance and once I gain my breakthrough, he he sees that what this will achieve is people not working, uh, dropping fear when they see strange, creepy stuff and realizing that ultimately if you hold on to Jesus, you conquer. Because if God be for you, nobody can be against you. I stand to humiliate people in the occult. Why? Because I will win. I will conquer. And when I conquer, that's business dwindling for the occult. Why? Because less and less members are going to join. Less and less clients are going to be consulting the Sangoma. Less and less people involved in dark arts are going to be prepared to continue in this way because if at all, Karabo is right. It means I'm going to hell. So they will stop. So the whole industry is going to crash. That's what I'm getting at. So it is better if I commit suicide. It's better if I die. It's better if I give up. I end up like compromising, settling for some random like a nonsense nuisance in these streets it is ideal if i do what they want me to do because if i do what they want me to do on that day they get to uh, achieve they get to achieve maintained fear with there being no reprieve in sight goodness gracious can you imagine a world like that where there is no way out when there is a haunting in the room have you seen horror movies that have sequels over and over and over again? How frustrating they are. How the lead character dies anyway at the beginning of the set of the part two of the second of, of like um, horror movie one, horror movie two. The lead actor that conquered at the end dies at the beginning of horror movie two. And then horror movie three, the lead actor that conquered at the end of horror movie two dies at the end of horror movie three. You will be so disillusioned by it all. And you will be thankful, breathing a sigh of relief to realize that it's just a movie until you wake up and understand the stuff that happens in movies that goes a bump in the night are real my goodness have you seen the the the, the show the grudge and all of its sequels and all of its see not did the ring have the, a sequel i can't remember but the grudge definitely did have a sequel and it is so disheartening because it's a sarah michelle geller or whatever the lead character from the first one who conquered she is in a mental asylum and dies from the grudge at the beginning of the sequel and so it's like there is no running away from this there's no hope in that it's a loop just a loop a psychosis a constant chaos that puts people in clutches chains maintaining them in trusting anything other than the name of jesus who is truly redemptive against these matters they they burn sage they go and they do spells to the sangoma to do uh, protection spells all that jazz so the important thing in a world where the grudge has exited the screen if anything the movie the ring is perfect the ring is the one with that child inside the the well right yeah mm. you know how that child uh king is she she comes out got tv like you will be watching something on television and then she like crawls out of the tv and it's all scary that's what's good yeah stuff that you thought was inside a television is actually real when that level of haunting is happening in a person's life where do you find healing who in the world is going to vanquish that nasty little thing? Who is going to stand firm, unperturbed, unmoved for crying out loud when that strange little ugly girl with too much hair on her face comes out of a TV? Who is going to deal with her instead of running away from her? Because remember, you can't run. You run and it comes and it crawls from the wall. You run and it comes at you from underneath your bed. You run, it suffocates you while you're watching TV. So at this point, I just feel as though, you know what, I'm going to chill. I need to eat my popcorn. I need to watch my movie. So I'm just gonna do what? Vanquish you in what? The name of who? Jesus. It's that basic. I'm not running. I am facing you. And demons tremble in the sight of God. 
at the name of Jesus. So tremble, strange little girl crawling out of a television screen, because that's what you do in reality when the name of Jesus is raised up. When the name of Jesus is used in order to fight a battle, that's what I'm getting at. You need to understand that even if it gets super dark, you gotta hold on to God. Indeed, as we walk through the valley of the shadow of darkness, we will fear no evil for God is with us. Christ is with us. And this here is a valley of a shadow of darkness. There is so much haunting around me. For that's what the Lord has seen it fit to put me in the ministry to uh, conquer, to achieve. He wants me to deal with Bosat and Ibama, South Africa. He wants me to deal with Bosat and among my friends. He wants my family members to be handled. He wants all of these people that think they can uh, cast spells, wave magic wands, open little portals, allowing hauntings to massacre their innocent family members and friends. To understand that you dare do this again next time you, as a mere mortal, will be vanquished. The Lord so far has had mercy on you, allowed you to live, albeit conquering your demons. Next time you will just simply have the earth just like in Korah's rebellion. In Korah's rebellion, he will allow the earth to open underneath your feet and let you plunge into hell. He will kill you. You will die. The first time around, he will conquer your demons, making sure they don't work. In other words, your witchcraft falls on deaf ears. But the second time, you will simply plunge into the abyss because who in the world causes so much of a haunting on the earth? And that is what I dreamt about. I dreamt about there being so much of an eerie, creepy, strange, ominous haunting around my life. Until I finally just kind of took in my stride. Yet another disgusting man. They keep trying. I told you. The other day I was struggling with um, uploading. Because they had come against me being able to upload content at all. They had come against that. Because they're literally trying to butcher anything they can. I keep getting attacked by anything these witches can attack. And when they fail, I conquer, I rise above it, I climb that hurdle and move to the next one. The next, uh, goodness, I feel like Mario or some game, in the, like a, some like a video game that keeps moving from level to 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 level. And each new level, there is a brand spanking new monster. And this monster, when it gets defeated, it uh, rears its ugly head again in the next level, but doing a different thing. They have done a different thing this time around. The Bible says in Romans 1 that the wicked will keep on inventing new ways to sin. The wickedness against Israel has only prospered to basically cause all this anti-Semitism across the world and make their lives a living nightmare while trying to make peace with people that are you know you, you can't you can't negotiate with them they're insufferable they're irreconcilable they are truce breakers according to what 2 timothy 3 has to say israel keeps having these issues but you see this is what god has to say about those who are standing with him having not rejected their messiah if the lord's if the if a man's ways are pleasing to the lord it is written in God's word that he will make even his enemies to live at peace with them. So how in the world do you live at peace with witches? You make them repent. Like stop your nonsense. Unless you want to end up like Korah's rebellion in the ground. Having been utterly removed from the earth because you're a menace to society. You will repent. Given that you have been shown the power of the name of Jesus. And that how in the world are you going to target one mere mortal of a Christian woman to force her to validate your witchcraft? How under heaven are you content with the world you have created? How under heaven are you so content with ill-gotten gain that you will be content and at ease, just relaxing in the fact that you have made the world like all the monsters that you could ever fathom watching in a horror movie coming into waking life. You have made people's lives like The Grudge, The Ring, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, you have made uh, like everybody's lives some kind of a haunting that's what the occult is you have created an eerie earth to live in you have made a creepy little haunted freaking planet and if you're content with that you don't deserve to live among us you don't deserve to live among us as a human being you have to die you gotta die because you've made the world like the ring and you know one of the scariest horror movies that i've ever watched of all time is the grudge the ring and the grudge what which is the one with the girl with the hair that falls down the face and it has like uh, uh sounds like a frog just constantly croaking without stopping without breathing i think it's it's the the grudge give a grudge it is so scary the one with the asian girls in it yeah it is so scary and it is so disheartening because there's no way they can go and usually in horror movies the thing that goes bump in the night haunts at night it haunts at night it follows them at night it afflicts them at night it hurts them in the night guys one minute the thing that goes bump in the night haunts them but in the movie the grudge yes like it there are these school girls at school she's at school 
one scene she is at school in her school uniform and she is in her what is this principal's office because she's running away from what it is that, that had followed her from an apartment it had followed her from where it is that they had so these two school girls went and visited this haunted house and it followed them and she was in her principal's office with the principal like she was talking with the principal and the principal leaves the room or something and this grudge haunting is like ah all up in her grill she runs out it's during the day at school and this thing came at her after the principal left the principal's office she then ran and went to use a public payphone to basically ask for help in public like it's like people are bustling all over the city and she gets inside this red telephone booth and inside the booth where she's trying to make a phone call the thing comes and attacks her in there while there's everybody around everybody in the city is walking around usually in horror movies the thing that attacks attacks in isolation and when the person is alone and also when it's at night but in the grudge it's during the day i missed people and it will haunt this girl making her life a living yeah well that's what witchcraft does it's more like the movie the grudge that's how it is it'll follow you when you are talking with your mom you will be talking you will be petting your cat and it'll follow you you will be in public at the mall and it'll be all up in your grill the demonic depression the despair the uh attempt you know the, the suicide kill yourself kill yourself kill yourself kill yourself it'll talk to you while you're having a conversation with the lady at the kiosk at fushini asking her you know which is better between this um color of lip gloss versus this one and while you're making you're having that conversation with the lady at the fushini she doesn't know what's going on there is then a spirit that's telling you you're worthless you're nothing go kill yourself go kill yourself something that is driving a woman to go home and hang herself close all the windows write some five little letter a suicide note and kill herself because she was being bugged from the mall around people in traffic she's driving kill yourself i was listening to the, the, the documentary about some guy um what do you call this that there was a serial murderer back in the day in south africa by the name of booty boor booty like the entities that were all up in his grill he would be standing walking in public and then he would see some little boy on the street corner and inside him there would be a voice that says fatom fatom in other words take him take him in other words go murder and this person goes and murders that's what witchcraft does a person is just sitting here and then all of a sudden they get an idea in jafela to go and kill some child in a cot to go and kill her child in a cot a woman to commit suicide when she was fine just two hours ago a woman like masturbate when she wasn't even trying to do that it'll cause a man to rape a woman when he's never raped before i do see at a street corner that's witchcraft it's like the freaking grudge do you understand it is the grudge and there are people who are just sending people like that fatum 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 bewitch that guy cause that husband to fight with his wife and like sowing discord in marriages causing a man that has never laid a hand on his wife to all of a sudden wham bam fatum causing a woman that would never cheat on her husband to all of a sudden salivate over her boss and have an affair in a car in the parking lot at her offices even though she was a better woman like that if anything when she got married she was a virgin but here it is that she's got having a whole romping session in the parking lot with her boss because her colleague bewitched her to become a wayward woman because she was jealous of her virtue and she wanted to sow discord in her marriage family members my family you're in my go here so it's even worse my mother will wake up one morning and yesterday she will have been cool with me and the next thing she'll be yelling at me the next day for the smallest little infraction she will feel guilty for it later on because she will realize that she was manipulated and, and then she will act in a way so as to suggest that she's sorry but by then i am so hurt fatom fatom that's what witches are doing they sow discord between families they bring a haunting they make things fly around all over the room like poltergeist activity they're content with that if you are content with an earth where people can just be made to commit suicide two hours after getting a call telling them that they've successfully interviewed for a job and so they had every reason to live if at all under heaven you want to live in a world where Garabo is constantly being communicated to in the spirit about how her funeral service is going to embarrass her family members and so encourage her to kill herself so as to get at her family members if that's the freaking planet you're cool with living on you have to die you gotta die and that's what wishes are like they're these crazy creeps that have made the world a haunting and the haunting like the one in the movie the grudge it doesn't wait for you to sleep at night it doesn't wait for the room to get empty it does not wait for you to enter into a ghost town it does not wait for the lights to go off it just pounces on you in broad daylight in a bustling city until you commit a crime that you did not want to do and in increasing measure stuff like that and these occult freaks are content to just keep doing this and definitely manipulating people's lives swaying them like pendulums in the cosmos 
why they, they, they are unable to be stabilized why they can't sleep why babies won't stop crying why bats keep on flying hovering overhead over your household why everything just keeps falling apart for you they are sending they are making people live in a horror movie a nightmare 24 hours a day and so really and truly the lord gives a carabo people like me grace do you understand to conquer this rubbish because they see it for what it is I see the quietness of my YouTube channel with the tumbleweed rolling through it for what it is. I see the silent treatment for what it is. I see the eerie disposition of my family members for what it is. I see it as the grass trying to pop out of a television scaring me, making me run away when I have no fear but the fear of the Lord. Yo, in the name of Jesus, I just pull out of my particular hat, the name of Christ, and this stuff trembles. It shudders, but others, it makes them cry. Others, it makes their eyes bleed. Others, it makes them run scared. Others, it makes them capitulate. But for me, for me, a child of the living God, I trample it underfoot. And when you conquer, when you finally overcome in a way that is final and complete because the Lord has seen it fit to now give you your breakthrough, that's when you become an encouragement to everybody else that's living with the grudge. Everybody else that's living with the ring, with Freddy Krueger, with the monsters in the cabin in the woods, with Nightmare, with Jason from Nightmare in, in, in Elm Street, with the ring, the grudge proper. When you are living with Annabelle, the conduit strange doll that, that is murderous, that is homicidal, you then finally realize that, I'm sorry, no, like, get out, candy man, in the name of Jesus. Get out, it the clown, in the name of Jesus. These random beetle juices, these clowns, all over the show, in the occult. They just gotta be put in their place where their entities will be subdued, their witchcraft will fail, and if they don't wanna repent, they better be swallowed like Korra's rebellion by the ground. They gotta die if they don't wanna repent. And that's the war that I'm fighting right now. It is literally a trial by ordeal. And some of them, they don't want to repent. And so they will inevitably die. And I appear like some homicidal freak that can't for the life of me stay wait to shed blood. Except I'm not trying to shed blood. I'm trying to spare people from shedding their own blood. I'm trying to spare people from going to the flames of hell. And these people are blocking it at their own expense. They're deceiving being given. They are being deceived. And in and of themselves, they are deceiving. They don't know that the devil has made them content to live on an earth that who, there has got so many demonic portals open that everybody's experiencing a haunting. So cease and desist. I'm gonna explain to you the dream that I got that got me talking like this, that got me saying, you cannot think that you can deal a true Christian the way that Hamas or the Muslim nations around Israel has treated Israel and succeed. You're not gonna succeed because we have embraced the Messiah. And so therefore we conquer, we overwhelm, we don't capitulate. The Lord makes whoever is around us ultimately live at peace with us because it's literally a trial by ordeal. If you can't join them, if you can't beat them, join them. That's how it is with Christianity. And since you can't beat us, and if you don't want to join us, die. You will be taken out the way. The Lord says this about a wicked and a perverse man. He, so he I, I once saw a wicked and perverse man spreading himself like a green laurel tree. And the next thing I looked around for him and he was nowhere to be found. You cannot make people live such a haunted life when they haven't signed up for it. You can't keep making people commit suicide. You can't keep making a business case for yourself as a witch man. When a Christian woman says, I'm not going to be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. You cannot continue to fast a man. And expect that God is not going to one day just snap a finger and you will be swallowed by the ground like Korah in his rebellion. You are trying to commit Balaam's error. The only reason why Balaam's error was able to work is because you were, what is this, um, uh, they were able to convince God's people to partake in food sacrificed to idols and to commit to sexual immorality. Therefore, compromise. If you cannot make God's people compromise, stop thinking you can curse them. You cannot curse those whom God has blessed. And if you try, you are committing Balaam's error. And like Balaam, you will have a donkey talk to you, telling you, what have I done? You will thoroughly have some supernatural activity knock you off your chair. If you want to live in the cabin in the woods, if you want to go and live inside Nightmare in Elm Street, never be able to sleep while crazy Freddy Krueger keeps on following you around. Do you, with your own demonic tormentedness? Remember when I met your Ouija board sighting, Samaya went on to wave by your magic wand and haunt yourself. But the moment you start to want everybody else to join you in your haunted house, that is otherwise known as the earth around you, Honey, on that day, disappear. I don't know, it'd be nowhere to be found proper like the man who are spreading himself like a green laurel tree disappear from the face of the earth because frankly, we are doing better without you here on this earth. Nobody wants to live in a horror movie. It is why it's a movie. At the end of it, everybody leaves the theater and they go home. Whew, whew, proper sigh of relief that it was just a movie. Giving us nightmares for two, three nights afterwards. But after all, it's just a movie. But when you start to bring those creepy movies, into waking life, I suga, repent or perish. 
and nobody will miss you if you perish because who in the world is unleashing monsters in the cabin in the wood without facing some kind of governmental comeuppance somebody gotta arrest you someone gotta put you in a place somebody gotta put you in a stray suit before i move on from this part let me finish reading but if some of the branches were broken off and you although a wild olive shoot were grafted in among the others and now share in the nourish in the nourishing of uh, nourishing root of the olive tree do not be arrogant towards the branches if you are remember it is not you who support the root but the root that supports you then you will say branches were broken off so that, so that i might be grafted in that is true they were broken off because because of their unbelief but you stand fast through faith exactly so do not become proud for if god did not spare the natural branches neither will he spare you neither will he spare you note then the kindness and the severity of god the kindness and the severity of god kind enough to cast out demons from your body but severe enough to if you don't repent swallow you whole like Korah's rebellion do not take god for granted severity towards those who have fallen what is this fallen but god's kindness to you provided you continue in his kindness otherwise you too will be cut off and even they if they do not continue in their unbelief will be grafted in for god has the power to graft um them in again which he will do with israel ultimately for if you were cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree how much more will these the natural branches be grafted back into their own olive tree therefore also debunking replacement theology let's move to the next part so i can explain to you the dream i had